Welcome to COVID-19 blog number five. My name is Steve Mole and I'm here today with RCGP Chair Martin Marshall. Today's focus is shielding for vulnerable patients. Martin, what are you hearing? Yeah, so this is a really uh, important issue and it's an important part of the CMO's policy across all four countries to essentially flatten the curve by focusing attention and resources on those who are at greatest risk of COVID, greatest risk of requiring NHS services. So we're hearing across all four nations that the guidance and expectations of general practice as far as this is concerned are not yet clear. And in particular, there's uncertainty about uh, when vulnerable patients, i.e. those who regularly give flu jabs to, become shielded patients. And this is an issue that, as I say, across all four nations, we've been uh, bringing to the attention of NHS leaders uh, and to government as well. OK, so what, what, what is the guidance, Martin? Well, the guidance focuses on, on specific groups, very specific groups, actually. So those who've had solid organ transplants, those who've got specific cancers who are on active treatment, those with severe long-term disease, uh, those with congenital disorders like uh, sickle cell disease, and those who are pregnant uh, who've got heart disease as well. And these have been identified through a, uh, an initial trawl of hospital records. This has been done and letters have been sent to those patients. And it's now being refined through a second process of checking GP records. And that's ongoing at the moment in England and um, also in other, the other three countries as well. Uh, GPs are being asked to use their personal knowledge to check these uh, lists, both the hospital list and our own list, and to respond to patient queries when um, people think they should be on the list but actually aren't. Okay, and uh, what's actually being done for these patients? So this is, this is quite an intense intervention, actually. It's a very specific offer for those people who are on the shielded list. It includes 12 weeks of um, what you might call extreme isolation. So this is isolation um, absolutely housebound and uh, separation from family members as well, where at all possible, living as much as possible in, in your own room. It also requires a medical review and it requires a, a dedicated medicines and shopping service, which is being either delivered by neighbours and, and family where that's possible uh, or by NHS volunteers where that isn't possible. OK, that sounds pretty clear. Um, are there any difficult things that GPs have to do as part of this? Yeah, there are, there are a couple of issues that we're continuing to, uh, to push on and to address. Um, the first is how we respond to uh, patients who aren't on the uh, shielded list. But think they should be. Uh, we've heard stories of, for example, a 93-year-old woman with morbidity, uh, very frail. You'd think she'd be on the high-risk list, but, uh, but she isn't at the moment, and she, and she would like to be, or her family would like to be, so that she gets access in particular to the, to the social care. Um, so there is a question, I think, about the nature of this list, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the list being uh, modified and changed over time. The challenge here, of course, is, you know, at a time of limited resources, we need to identify those who are at very much highest risk, and, and that's what this list is about. Um, the second challenge is, uh, is the expectation that we in general practice should be having conversations with all the people on the shielded list and actually people on the more vulnerable flu jab list as well about advanced care planning and about uh, do not attempt to resuscitate um, uh, guidance. And this is clearly a very sensitive thing for us to do in general practice at the best of times, but particularly when things are under um, enormous pressure and it requires the exceptional skills that we bring as GPs, but also resources, time in particular, to do this uh, properly. And I'm not sure that's properly um, uh, recognised uh, within government at the moment. I don't think the sensitivity of these uh, discussions are, are properly recognised. I don't think the population in general um, have been prepared for it. So we're asking for a, uh, some kind of public campaign to help people so that when we start those conversations, they don't come as a complete shock. Fantastic. Well, many thanks, Martin. And Till next time, to all our colleagues and patients, please be careful and stay safe.